program, Mark Kestesher, ESPN radio host, joining me now. He's doing the pre-game, halftime, and post-game coverage for the game tomorrow night. Mark, appreciate the time, sir. How we doing? Cam, it's good to be on with you, and it's exciting to be here with uh, with all the fans. You know, oftentimes, uh, for what I do on, on radio, you know, we're, um, we do the game, we do the uh, program surrounding in and around the game, and oftentimes it doesn't deal with the, uh, the fans yeah. who we know are listening to the broadcast wherever they may be. So it's nice to interact. It's nice to get out and good to be on your show. Can't you just hear the play-by-play -play as he <laughs> talks? you got to love it. So, Mark, a lot of excitement in this game. You have so many storylines. Smart, former assistant for Nick Saban. You know, Alabama, been there, done that so many times. What storylines stick out to you? Well, I think the, um, the head coaching storylines certainly stick out, but moreover to me in that Kirby Smart, he knew in a smart way that he was going to take what Nick Saban did and try to build that model at Georgia. And he, he, he didn't take it over a program that needed a complete rebuild. It was a team that was, you know, winning 9, 10 games a year anyway, but needed to get over that hump. And so he said, well, look what Alabama did. That's where I just worked the last nine years. Let's see if we can do it under that system. Big lines, big offensive linemen, big defensive linemen, strong running game. And so to me, the fascinating point will be in a short turnaround since they both played a week ago. Georgia had to travel all the way across the country. Uh, Alabama had the later game and had to stay overnight in New Orleans and come back, which is um, will there be any big plays, fake punt, onsides kick? Maybe we're not going to get that. It's just going to be strength against strength, yep. running game. So I, I think um, even, it'll be fascinating to see how the rest of the country sees this even though it's, it's an SEC game in SEC country right here in Atlanta, but to have two really good teams go head-to-head -head in what they do so well in formats that were built largely mirrored uh, to me is fascinating. You know what's fascinating, Mark, is we're actually looking at Alabama and going into the playoff, you know, they had this chip on their shoulder because everybody thought they didn't belong in the first place, right? It should have been Ohio State. All the right. prognosticators out there said the Buckeyes should have gotten in. Alabama got in instead, and it's odd to say that they actually have a chip on their shoulder because they're always the favorite, so it's kind of a different dynamic now this it's year. It's almost not fair because right. uh, they probably in any other situation would be, and they are, you're right, they are the betting favorite. And I think when you look at these two teams, giving Alabama that second chance, if you want to call it that, by allowing them in despite not uh, winning their conference championship, uh, you don't want to give a team like Alabama a second chance because they're as good as any team in college football. Uh, sure, they lost the game to Auburn, so they lost out at a chance to play for the SEC championship, but it's a team that's as good as any in the, in the country. Uh, when they were being depleted in their linebacking core toward the end of the season, Guys that were filling in, you know, were five-star recruits. So much depth. Yeah, that hadn't, they didn't have, they weren't ready for Alabama ball, let's say, but would start at many other programs around the country. So it's a team that if, if you know, for them to be kind of the Cinderella story as the four seed, doesn't really shake up, if you will. It, it doesn't jive uh, yet, uh, but here they are, and they are favored once again as they've been every game, I think, for two years since they lost to Georgia the last time they played. You know, just as a pure fan, Mark, watching Alabama play football and just appreciating Nick Saban, that's what we all have to do at this point, right? The greatness of Nick Saban and what he's doing. I feel like, you know, you just even if you're an analyst or you're, you're a Georgia football fan, take off that hat for a second and just appreciate what Nick Saban is doing. He's a once-in-a-generation type of coach, right? Sometimes it's hard to appreciate things things when they're happening but you're right all I don't want to say we all love to see dynasties but we talk about them an yeah. awful lot you know when the Cowboys had their dynastic run in the early 90s you know it was three championships in four seasons and here we are Alabama almost a full decade since Nick Saban came on it is a decade since he came on but from 2009 when they won that first BCS championship till last year a chance to make it five failed to do so against Clemson, now get another chance at five and nine years. These things don't happen often. He's now passing his mid-60s, probably got five, eight more good years that he may want to coach till he wants to hang it up, who knows. So you do have to appreciate these things while they're happening, and, and oftentimes we don't. And what a job Kirby Smart has done with the Georgia Bulldogs as well. Taking down Baker Mayfield and OU, which is really fantastic in its own right, now they have a chance to take down Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. What does Georgia need to do 
to get it done tomorrow night. Well, you know, they're going to obviously have to stop the run game of Alabama. They're going to have to force a turnover. You could, all these things I'm pointing out could go for either side right. because they're strength on strength. They're going to have to have a good start defensively. Oklahoma torched them in the first half, and it looked like it was going to be a short night for Georgia. Whatever Kirby Smart did, however he changed in the locker room, whatever he delivered at halftime, he's going to have to have that from the start. Going to have to execute, no mistakes, right from the beginning. They were fortunate to get out of the Rose Bowl with a win. They deserve it, but they're going to have to have that the entire game against Alabama. Mark Kestisher, he's got a busy day tomorrow. College Football Playoff National Championship game. Appreciate the time, sir. It means Damn, a nice lot. Nice to meet you. Have Thank a good you one. So much.